especially for the first uh, like session of the day. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about my personal journey into open source design um, with some kind of lessons that you can take to your own projects if you're looking to attract designers. So I'm Mel Choice. Um, I'm a UI and UX designer. Um, I live in Boston and I work for Automatic. Um, you can find me on all of these places. Uh, I'm also a core contributor to WordPress. And uh, something that I love about WordPress is that WordPress loves design. When I was uh, starting out as a web designer, um, I had kind of a vague understanding of what open source was. Um, I've been using open source software before. Um, in like high school and college, I was using OpenOffice and LibreOffice to write. So I had like, I like kind of knew about it as like a thing. Um, but I didn't really understand that it was something that like anyone could contribute to. Like they could find a project to get involved. Um, and I especially didn't know that you could contribute design to open source. I had it in my head as this thing that was just entirely coding. Uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, every open source project needs to be thinking about design. Uh, good design and good usability uh, make, your, make your projects and your software stand out. Um, it makes it more compatible um, with like proprietary software. Um, and I attribute actually a lot of WordPress's own success to the fact that it has been devoted to design uh, for its entire life. Um, but, like I originally thought, um, I feel like open source has a, a reputation for being uh, very, very code heavy and kind of developers only. So I don't think it occurs to a lot of designers that uh, you could actually contribute to open source, that you can get involved and in, do designs. Uh, so getting designers to join uh, and then stay in open source projects can be pretty difficult. So luckily, uh, throughout its history, uh, WordPress has managed to attract a fair number of designers and design-minded developers. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, my own experiences getting involved in WordPress. Uh, so we're going to take a trip back a couple years ago um, to one of my first web jobs when I started working with WordPress. So one of my first web industry jobs uh, was working for a small agency in Western Massachusetts. Um, that's kind of cool. We were mostly a contract-based job, so nobody was really working full-time. We were all just kind of there for however. Uh, and we had just started building sites with WordPress uh, when I joined. So most of the sites that I was working on uh, when I first started uh, working here, we were building on top of existing views. So we were either buying themes on theme cores and customizing them just a little bit, or we were using uh, Kubrick, uh, <laughs> a default theme of WordPress for a very long time. Um, but the more sites we did, the better we as a company got uh, with WordPress. So we started doing our own custom themes, uh, just more custom work for clients. Um, so one of my coworkers uh, attended WordCamp New York City in 2009. So WordCamps are just general WordPress conferences uh, that we have all over the world. Uh, I was actually just at one this past weekend, uh, or the weekend before in Chicago, and then uh, there's one coming up in Seattle this weekend. So if you feel like taking a trip this weekend, you can go to WordCamp Seattle. So going, um, so my coworker went to uh, WordCamp uh, in New York City um, in 2009. And she kind of fell in love with WordPress more and the community more there. And so when 2010 rolled around, uh, she got some support internally for us to go to the conference as a whole. And she was like, let's do it. That'd be awesome. And my boss was like, yeah, sure. So we piled into his car, and we drove down to New York City, and we were able to attend. Um, but once we had actually decided that, hey, we were going to do this, um, this coworker was like, hey, you know, they're looking for some design volunteers to work on some like promotional materials and branding for the conference. Um, and actually, you can see that the author was dead and sitting in front of him. <laughs> um, so it seemed really cool. So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll volunteer. I love design. I'll be doing design related. Um, what I didn't actually realize at the time was this is going to be my first community contribution. It looks something like this. It was just a little skyline in New York City that I worked on with some other people. Um, Going to be used in promotional materials. And then the final graphic looks something like this. And it showed up on t-shirts, on badges, on stickers. 
So when I got there, it was like really cool that like this thing that I had worked on was like on everybody's badness and like felt really, really satisfying. And at that point, I realized, hey, I wonder how much more I can do with this. So at WordCamp New York City, um, I really fell in love with not just using WordPress, but the WordPress community. And I really decided that I wanted to get more involved. So I tried to figure out how. Um, and it ended up being kind of hard, actually, for me as a beginner. So I spent a lot of time uh, when I joined uh, just observing other designers in the community, um, what they were working on, how they contributed. Um, I had a lot of designers that I could look up to and learn from uh, who were always help, uh, willing to help me uh, with any design work that I was doing. Um, but there were a lot of different uh, places and tools to keep track of if I wanted to be fully moving. So uh, we have what are called P2s. Um, they're uh, community blogs that you can participate with, uh, where the majority of public discussion takes place. So I felt really comfortable uh, reading along um, on these different blogs, um, looking through old posts, trying to get a feel for what was being worked on. Um, it was it felt like one of the easier ways for me to join in the conversation, um, and it felt less intimidating to actually speak up a little bit here because uh, something about it, like being asynchronous. <laughs> meant that like, there was like, less pressure on me like, at the moment. Um, so I really started like, reading and following along there first. For the past couple cycles, uh, some contributors have been posting uh, weekly recaps of everything that's being worked on, uh, including relevant links. Uh, so while uh, most of it's development related, there are uh, also UI projects being mentioned. So uh, it's, made what, it's made keeping an eye on things even easier for new contributors so they don't have to hunt as much. So uh, we also do a lot of chatting on IRC. Um, we have chats uh, where teams can come together in real time and talk about what they're working on. So when I, I uh, started wanting to contribute, I ended up sitting in on the UI chats that happened uh, like every week, every other week. Um, speaking up in IRC was very intimidating for me at first. I was just you know, really nervous about it. So for a while, all I did was I watched. And I learned a lot just by watching the chats. Um, and, you know, even after I did, uh, like, kind of like get into things and start chatting, um, the main uh, chat uh, in WordPress Dev, which like we have like a weekly uh, developer meeting, well, it scared the crap out of me <laughs> because it was just even more uh, intimidating to me than the UI chat, which I had come to like become a part of. Um, but the more I sat in on that, and the more I became part of the community, the less intimidating it was. And it, like, it was good to set a baseline for like how to behave, like when to speak, when not to speak. So like being able to like even to sit in and observe made things easier for me uh, later. So most of the actual work um, that happens gets done on track. Uh, so I found track pretty challenging at first. You know, what's a component? What's a ticket? How do I make a ticket? Um, when I started contributing, uh, it was especially hard to just kind of jump in and find a task for me to work on in track. So I kind of avoided it <laughs> for a little while. So thankfully, track has actually improved a lot in the past year. Um, it's been restructured a bit, it's been organized, so it's easier for beginners or designers uh, to wade into. So there's also now uh, visible starting points for new contributors, uh, including a good first bug for new contributors. Uh, and uh, tickets requesting UI or UX feedback, uh, which is great if you want to start getting involved in design. So there's a clear path for new contributors to get involved. So what I personally found to be um, one of the most challenging parts of contributing as a designer uh, was adapting to the technology that we used uh, to build WordPress. Um, so I had to you know, learn how to use command line a little bit, uh, SVN to create any sort of CSS patches that I wanted to contribute. And so getting set up in SVN uh, in a terminal was probably the biggest thing that stopped me from contributing uh, any code for even over a year. Um, but most of all, uh, it came down to fear. So I was afraid that my design skills would be unwanted or unwelcome, uh, fear that other contributors uh, would look down on me or ignore me or find me irritating, uh, fear that I just, you know, I just wasn't good enough to contribute. Um, so sometimes I kind of still feel like this, but it's been helped a lot uh, by just how great the community has welcomed me. Um, we have 
what I consider to be one of the most welcoming communities I've ever been a part of. Uh, people are always wanting to give me a hand when I'm stuck. Um, I've never been made to feel unwelcome. And so that really helped me get into it with just how like helpful everybody was. So there's a, there a point where I had to just conquer this fear, uh, I had to stop observing, and I really just had to start pitching in. I started to ramp up my participation in around mid-2012, uh, which was actually a full like year and a half of work camp in New York City. Um, I had started to get my bearings, you know, I knew the people now. Um, I had become enough of a participating voice that I was really itching to like get my first patch in the core. So at this point, I had actually already done um, some wireframes and mockups, worked on some projects, but I hadn't gotten any code committed. Um, I was still really intimidated by tracking SVN. Um, I was a designer, and uh, most design conversations happened in um, the UI or in uh, the WordPress UI RC channel. Um, but I wanted to get some code committed, uh, so I had to uh, find a CSS that you would track that I could contribute to. So at uh, WordCamp Philly, um, I finally had that chance. So Sunday, uh, they threw a developer day. So they had people come in and talk about contributing to core, uh, getting people set up on their local machines, uh, to, like telling people how to create a patch. Uh, Aaron Jordan, who's sitting over here in the front, um, and is also a speaker this weekend, uh, found a CSS issue in track that uh, he thought that I could handle. And was like, here, you should work on this. So with like the help of some people, um, I got set up. You know, I started working on it. Um, it was something about bringing uh, color schemes into sync, since at the time we had a gray scheme and a blue scheme. Uh, and so, you know, they helped me through saving my changes as a patch uh, and submitting it to track, and they got approved and committed to core by Andrew Mason, who's also in the back. So it's kind of like a fun, this room is like an interesting blending of like my history in WordPress, because my dad <laughs> got me first started with WordCamp New York City. Aaron, who helped me out with my first patch, and Mason, who committed my first patch. So. And then after my first patch, it just got easier and easier. And you know, once I had done it once, I felt like I could continue to do it. So one of the best ways that you, know, you and your project can get designers and new contributors involved <laughs> is to sit down with them and help them get started. Hackathons are great, uh, meetups, uh, local contributor dev days are awesome. Um, sometimes people, all people need is a little push to get started. So I spent roughly another six or seven months uh, contributing design and CSS where I could. Uh, my confidence grew. I spent more time participating in IRC and track discussions. Then in January of last year, uh, major design changes came to WordPress. I like to call this the great flattening. <laughs> So it started with icons. Uh, ben Dunkel, who is WordPress's official icon designer, pretty cool dude, uh, proposed some new vector icons to replace the existing um, raster icons. So the vector icons had the benefit of scalability. You know, we wouldn't have to worry about adding multiple PNGs to support Retina. Uh, it was a really great idea. So they were really cool, but they didn't really fit into the existing admin uh, as it existed at that time. You know, they were designed a little larger so that they were legible uh, because they didn't have as many details as the raster icons. Uh, their flat style clashed a bit with the heavy gradient usage. So we knew that if we were going to add them, we would have we would have to like redesign the add a little bit. So along with a couple other people, um, I helped imagine uh, what the admin would look like if it was totally flat. Uh, it was actually really refreshing to see it that way, but it unearthed a ton of problems. Um, so the resulting design had a uh, little affordance, very little contrast, and at the time we actually didn't have enough time to finish the design by the end of the cycle, so we just scrapped it. We were like, okay, we'll work on it again in the future. But shortly thereafter, <laughs> I received this email via my uh, site's contact form. Uh, I think my heart stopped when I opened it <laughs> and realized that it was the, like the co-founder of WordPress was like, hey, you should add me on Skype. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> um, but I added him on Skype. And he was like, hey, you know, we're going to start a group that's going to work on um, redesigning the admin you know, outside of our release cycle. So instead of doing it as patches and track, uh, we're going to work on it as a plugin. And then we're going to merge that plugin into core whenever it's ready. We don't need to worry about getting it in time for 3.7 or 
whatever, you know, it goes in when it's ready. And so I was like, cool, yeah, totally, I'm gonna do that. Uh, and we called the project uh, NP6. So uh, if it stands for anything, I'm still unsure. Um, I don't know that anyone knows except for maybe Matt. Uh, but it was a good name when we were starting to experiment with different things. It like felt kind of mysterious. Uh, we put the plugin up in the WordPress plugin repo so anybody could download it and like check out the new admin as we were working on it. And leading the team uh, was uh, Matt Miklik, also known as MT, uh, who was one of the um, another community designer who had been with WordPress for like five or six years. So by sharing a lot of our initial designs in a private Skype room. Um, we were able to create a safe space for designers to experiment, to play, play with different ideas uh, without worrying about having those ideas crushed immediately. Um, so ideas are really fragile and it doesn't take very much to squash them when you're first getting started. Um, we had a shared set of expectation for critiques, uh, so we knew that we could critique each other's work uh, and not feel uh, intimidated or threatened. Um, and we just have like a shared sense of respect as we go into this. We also knew that if we didn't have a leader, uh, we could fail to make progress. Uh, so design by committee rarely works, which is actually one of the biggest challenges of open source. Because everything should be open, but when there are too many people with opinions on designs, sometimes nothing, nothing gets done. Um, we needed somebody who would always be willing to call uh, the shots, make the final decisions, and you know, breaking ties. So uh, a lack of leadership had you know, harmed uh, previous efforts to redesign the admin, uh, resulting in hurt feelings. So you know, with MT as our leader, we had uh, somebody who could keep charge, uh, keep things moving forward, so we always had momentum. Uh, most importantly, we knew that we had to be transparent. So in the past, you know, lack of transparency had caused you know, hostility or anger uh, within the community, like, you know, why isn't anyone telling us this? This is our project, like, why are you hiding? So to combat this, we tried to hold regular meetings. Um, we posted frequent updates uh, on the progress of the project. Uh, we solicited general community feedback, and, you know, we acknowledged that feedback publicly, even if privately, you know, sometimes we agreed, sometimes we didn't disagree. Or sometimes we agreed, sometimes we didn't agree. Um, but everybody's feedback was welcome. Um, and people's feedback ended up, you know, making the project even better. So in the end, there were still some hurt feelings. Um, we were still behind closed doors. I wish we had made it even more transparent than we had. And I think that's one of the big lessons that we learned uh, starting with this new, this new way of contributing, that you need to be even more transparent. So by the time that MP6 was eventually merged in WordPress 4, uh, we had 16 active contributors in our Skype chat. Uh, plus people giving feedback um, by RC, um, make UI, and uh, core contributors reviewing the code in the So WordPress 3.8 uh, shipped with the updated admin interface. Um, we only made style changes. We actually didn't change uh, any anything other than CSS and some JavaScript. So the goal was just to like bring it visually up with more modern designs. Uh, there were a couple additional UI updates that made it into this merge uh, that were developed uh, separately, but we all came together at the end. So uh, for users who benefited from uh, lower contrasts, we included a light color scheme. It's very light here. Uh, we also included some extra color schemes for fun. So we had a couple. <coughs> And we also shipped the new admin design uh, with a ton of icons in an icon form. Uh, so in addition to updating the existing icons, we ended up adding a bunch of new icons that developers could use for the plugins, for the custom post types, and they're all available for anyone to use. So what we were doing uh, with MP6 is pioneering a new way to contribute. Uh, it blended some of the best parts of uh, previous features, uh, like previous ways of building features, uh, providing a safe space for experimentation and collaboration, um, while improving on uh, previous mistakes, or like not even mistakes, but like things that we had learned uh, were better, like uh, making sure we had more transparency uh, and solid leadership. Uh, best yet, since we didn't tie um, features into release cycles, 
It means that they can take as much time as they need to do. Nothing needs to be rushed. Nobody needed to do, don't worry about finishing something in time. <coughs> so as a 3.8, um, we've started designing and developing um, major features uh, as plugins. <laughs> and it's kind of like a brand new world. So it's a great way to get designers um, involved because instead of uh, throwing people right uh, in a track and then into the SVN, uh, it gives designers specific tasks that they can work on, they can get involved with. They're not like, oh, you know, I want to improve the, des the design of WordPress. I guess I'm going to look through track for an issue that somebody's created. It's like, oh, there's this group getting together. They're going to work on this new UI feature. That's probably something that I can, you know, get involved with. It's only going to be a couple people. It'll be, you know, a safer space. There's going to be less people, you know, maybe like really looking at me as I'm doing this. Um, so it, it feels more comfortable. Um, and if you're more quote inclined, uh, so the, the way that we've been doing it is that each team kind of figures out how they want to develop, where they want to develop, and a lot of them have been doing it in GitHub. And as a designer, I, I really love GitHub for its, you know, how easy it is to use. Uh, I find it friendlier uh, because I can use like the GitHub app uh, to do all my changes. Um, so I've been finding that whole method like even, even more uh, easy to contribute to. So we worked hard in the past decade uh, to create a culture of design within WordPress. Uh, design is and always has been integral to the project. Um, but I think features as plugins uh, kind of brings that connection a little bit closer. Um, developers are concerned more and more with user experience, I found. So not everybody uh, can be or wants to be a designer, um, but everyone needs to care about design. So in the past year, I've seen uh, even more of a shift towards a like, total project uh, design culture as a whole. So by emphasizing features as plugins, uh, greater freedom uh, is given to designers to explore uh, and experiment before any code gets written, before they have to worry about any code. Uh, user testing is becoming even more emphasized as something just anyone at all can do. Anyone can run a user test. It's not just experienced designers who have that skill. And developers are becoming more uh, concerned with user experience. So the current release cycle, 4.0, uh, is being held, uh, led by Helen Hassandi. Uh, she's formerly uh, one of the leads of the UI team throughout the years. Uh, she's a developer by trade, she's not a designer, uh, but she has a good feeling for design and user experience. Uh, she puts a tremendous amount of focus on them. She embraces design culture. Uh, so her leading a release is uh, really great for obviously a lot of reasons, she's awesome. Um, but it also sends a clear signal that WordPress is committed to design. So just to summarize uh, some ways that you can help bring design to your open source projects. So provide uh, clear routes for designers to contribute, uh, easy ways for them to get started, guided ways for them to get started. Create a safe space uh, for experimentation and for feedback. Um, Designate a leader, don't design by committee. Make sure that there's somebody there who can make final decisions. Uh, make your design decisions transparent. You should talk about why you made these decisions. If somebody asks you, oh, why did you do it this way? You should be able to explain. And you should encourage an overall culture of design where everybody cares about design, even if not everybody designs themselves. Thank you. Sometimes it was just having something to say. Like actually like finally having either an opinion or what I thought was like an informed opinion. Sometimes I had opinions that I was like, uh, I don't think I should mention this because what if I'm wrong? So an overall building of confidence also helped me start chatting. And um, you said that the, you learned that you could make the design process more transparent than it had been in the most recent version. Mm -hmm. how, how have you guys thought about doing that? So I think with a lot of the um, a lot of the features as plugins that have happened since MP6 um, have been uh, I think a little bit more visible, a little more open to like, hey, anyone can join, you know, come and join our group. 
Um, I also think that after M6 happened, it became like, I think at first people were a little bit skeptical, like, oh, can we do this again? It still seems like it's like kind of like this opaque process. But the more we've done them, I think the more they naturally just become like a little bit more um, expected. Like people aren't like, oh, what is this new thing? What are they doing? They like kind of understand like how it's working. So I think that also helps. And then, you know, regular updates, et cetera. And also the fact that it's like, they're not smaller things. MP6 was huge. Uh, we worked on it for, I think, 13 months total. Maybe less. I don't know. I have a skewed sense of time. <laughs> um, and these other, uh, these other groups uh, have been working in shorter sprints, uh, smaller focus. And so I think that also helps. Yes? So we have like, kind of a small project with no designers. You go and like start like you document how do how do designers help us and you know you kind of get everything set up for them like where's a good place to go to actually like find them <laughs> so um, like, hey, we, we're ready for you so yeah. we want your help like is there anywhere to kind of post that information or, like, so I think word of mouth is probably the probably the most I don't know actually thinking about it um, so there is designers. Um, but on Layer Vault, um, they have like a design equivalent of Packer News kind of. Um, so that's a good place to be like, hey, maybe I'm looking for designers. Um, but also just talking to people, hey, do you know any designers who have any spare time would be interested in contributing? That kind of thing. For an established project, obviously, like WordPress, how do you deal with like design inertia, resistance to change? Is that just Communication, or sometimes we just have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think there are other people in here who could, who could also speak to that. Um, so we just sometimes we just move forward. <laughs> I know that not everyone's going to be happy. Um, that we can't please everybody, um, but everyone's opinions are still valid. So, I don't know. If you mentioned. Uh, Collaboration. Um, what tools or techniques do you recommend? Because I assume you're not the person with other people, right? Yeah. So, so design seems very visual and very, very good for in a room like this. Like we're gonna draw. How do you like share drawings together? So we usually, we usually just share um, just like wireframes that we've done first. Um, so there's another project going on right now. Um, so there's this plugin called Pressis. So it's not really a plugin. It's like an extension, but it's also not really an extension for the bookmark, but um, so you just click it when you're on the site, and it like will draw the assets, and you can like quickly drop them into a post. Uh, it hasn't been refreshed in like forever. Um, it's pretty pretty nice right now. Uh, so we're working on redesigning it and making it like really mobile friendly. Um, I've been mostly observing this group um, more than participating with it. Um, but uh, there's a we have a shared uh, P2. We're posting um, all the you know all the wireframes and mockups that we do, and then we can discuss them there. Um, and since it's like we've like we've like announced it, but like nobody's like really like gone en masse to it, like it still kind of feels kind of private, but it's also like anyone can come and check it out. So, but mostly mostly like showing each other like wireframes and images so and then like, talking about them together. So you're just like emailing each other files or are you using like Google Hangouts or something? Uh, it's all asynchronous, so we'll just drop it into uh, the like the blog and like talk about it. Or we'll drop it in like we have an IRC room um, where a lot of like oh, I need an answer right now, kind of happens. But we try to keep a lot of the big decisions uh, public, which is something we kind of learned with MP6. It's to like, do a lot of the like, oh, I need, you know, I need help with this now, I need an answer now. But then like, big things happen visible, like, in a visible way. But we haven't done any like, like really cool with like, like Google Hangouts. Yes. So how do you separate out the feedback you get from kind of a lot of people who just have a natural resistance to change following up, you know, I, but I like that color. From people that say, well, you know, from a UI standpoint, this is going to cause problems. You know, so feedback that is actually something you can do something about yeah. and, and affects the design versus, you know, I, I happen to like asking characters all the time. So, you know, yeah. kind of, so I think a lot of that is just like our gut. Like, uh, oh, you know, this makes sense. You know, I totally get what they're saying. Like, yes, that's true. And then people who have like opinions on specific things, like, oh, I don't like this font. I don't like this color. Like, why don't you try to do Yeah. People have really strong strong opinions about this kind of design. The design that they can immediately see and understand. So, 
you just gotta. Sorry. Any other So, how easy was it to justify design decisions being open without delving into design by committee issues? It was really hard. We had MTV most of it. <laughs> Honestly, like we, I think we were really worried about defending ourselves publicly as like like either like looking like we're like defensive or aggressive. You know, we really wanted to accept people's feedback without like being like, no, that's wrong. Um, and uh, one of the great things about MT is that he's like super diplomatic. Um, he has a great way of expressing design decisions. And so usually when somebody was like, why did you do this? Uh, he was like, oh, we did it for these reasons. And so it was super helpful to have a leader. And so that we had like one unified voice instead of like all of us like chiming up. So. Cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot.